So in the last video we learned what a lexer was and we learned how it works to generate tokens. In this video we're going to be learning about our parser and what our parser does is it takes the tokens in the order that they're given. It uses the order to work out if the tokens actually mean anything. So for instance I'm not going to have an if token and then an arrow token straight after it because in our language that doesn't make any sense. The parser has to figure out if the language matches our grammar. If it doesn't we give the user an error and if it does then we generate our parse tree that we can use to execute our program. So the first thing we do is we import Sly's parser class. Then we scroll down and we create our own class called parser that inherits the features from Sly's parser class just like the lexer did. And what we do is we pass the tokens from our lexer to our parser in a variable called tokens. So these are precedence rules. These came from the calculator that was built into Sly. So if I scroll down, you can see here are the precedence rules. So these were built into Sly's calculator example. And that's what I used as the sort of starting point for the programming language. What they do is they just tell the interpreter how to handle maths equations appropriately. So for example, it knows to do multiplication and division before addition and subtraction. So the parser is made up of grammar rules. We give our grammar rules to the parser generator and the parser generator gives us a parser for that grammar. So our first rule is called a statement and we're saying a statement can be empty. And if a statement's empty, we just want to do nothing. That means, for example, if we're in our interpreter, if I hit enter and I create new lines, there's not going to be any code to execute. It's just going to be empty. And that is what this statement does here. This next statement is the for loop. So we're going to leave that for a minute and we're going to scroll down and look at the variable assignment. So here we can assign variables. We can assign strings and expressions and expressions can be broken down into lots of different ways. An expression can be two expressions with a plus in between them, or it can be a variable or a number. That allows us to have infinitely long expressions because it's recursive, because an expression can be another expression that can keep being broken down for as much as it needs to. So an expression can be one plus two, but it can also be one plus two plus three or plus four or times five. And when we run that, we see the parse tree that's generated by the parser. So this is what our parser generates and this is what we use to execute our programs. So we can assign expressions to variables and strings and that's what all we can do when we assign a variable. But a variable can actually also be assigned to the value of another variable because you can see a variable can be assigned an expression and if we scroll down an expression can be another variable. So the next thing we can see here is the condition. So if I scroll up to an if statement we see an if statement is the if keyword with a condition then the then keyword then the first branch or the second branch depending on the condition and a condition if we scroll down is equal to an expression with double equals and then another expression. We could create more conditions, but just for simplicity, I just created one condition, which is the comparison operator. And then we have a function definition, which is the keyword fun, the name for the function, which is just a variable, two parentheses, the arrow operator, and then the statement or the code we wanna run in our function. And if we look at a statement, these are all statements. So a for loop is a statement, so is an if statement, so is a function definition. So technically that means in our language we could have a function definition within a function definition because they're all statements. And then finally we have the for loop which starts with a variable assignment which is our loop counter. It goes up to an expression so when we create a for loop we can say for i equals 0 to 10 but we can also pass in a variable there or we can pass in an expression so we could say 10 minus 1 or 10 minus 2 or whatever it is and the programming language would still understand what that means because it knows what an expression is. So when the parser sees these grammar rules what it does is it generates a tree. So it generates a parse tree and that's what you can see on the screen now. I'm going to show you the different parse trees for different constructs in our language. So the parse tree for an if statement will look a bit different from the parse tree for a for loop or a function call or a variable assignment. If we look at this, every single statement has a root, which is the value of the tree, and it has at most two children. So it has the first child on the left and the second child on the right. Even an if statement that looks kind of complicated has the root node up here, has the left branch here and here we have the right branch which is itself made up of another tree. Then we have for loops. So a for loop we give it a name which is how we know how to execute it but we run a for loop we have the first child which is the for loop setup which tells us the variable to assign and how many iterations to do and then the second statement is the code to be executed in the for loop. This for loop would run five times and all it will do is print out the x variable. So if I run that you can see there's our for loop, there's our setup our setup means we assign x the value of 0, 
our loop goes up to the number five and every time our loop runs we're just going to output the value of x and you can see the different constructs for each construct in our language so a plus operator is a simple one so if i said one plus two you can see the root node is add because we're adding two numbers together and we add the two children together from the tree when we assign a variable say a equals 10 you can see we have a var assign the first child is the variable name and the second child is the value if i wanted to assign a more complicated one so i could say a equals 10 times 2 we still have the same variable assignment the same name but instead of just a number we have this multiplication op operator as the second child so you can see our parser is working it's generating trees for all the code that we type into our interpreter the reason we generate trees is because they are a really good way to represent our language because we don't have to store the keywords such as then and two and four so we can save a bit of space by not having to store all of the different letters that make up our language that we don't need but it also means executing our program is really simple because all we do is we run a recursive function that first starts at var assign it says i want to assign a which is the left child Child, or whatever the value of the right child is. But we use trees because the tree makes it really easy for us to interpret our language, as we'll see in the next video. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. If you have any questions, you can email me at francis at hico.org. In the next video, we're going to be executing our code. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.